Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for the next episode of Off the Grid. Yes, that's right, I'm still sleeping at the campground. Although, you know, I wanted to get the boat out. So I did a little bit of fishing last night and then just headed on over to the campground. And uh, parked up at the tent. Figured what the heck. I can get there over water. Actually, I can actually get there over water a little bit quicker than I can get there over land. There's my dock. Yeah, see how quick? <laughs> see the difference? Um, anyway, I did a lot more work at the sawmill. Um, I've got just about everything completely cleaned up and ready to go over there. Ooh, that's a little bit uh, squirrely. Anyway, all i got to do is pull up to the dock and I'm good to go here. There we go. Okay. So I got one more load to uh, unload. And Kevin has been working diligently over here on our fields. On our... Kevin? On our fields, plural? Um... Kevin? <laughs> uh, Kevin? I, I, I got, I need to see what he's doing here. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time at the sawmill. And, of course, you know, Kevin is the incredible hard worker. So... He told me he has a plan... I don't really have plans to help him today, and he hasn't asked for anything, but Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, um, I don't have fields. I've got a field, a field. I, I thought we were plying this back out for grass. Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> what are you doing, Kevin? So... Apparently... Apparently... <clears throat> apparently... Kevin has just made a giant field. One big fat giant field. Oh wait, wait, there is a separate one. There's one! Remember the potato field? Dude. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> no, I'm sure. I don't understand. What is going on here? Okay. 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 You know what? I I trust Kevin to do his job. That's, that's all I can say. I do trust Kevin to do his job. I am going to have to have a talk with that boy, though, because, frankly... <laughs> Um, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit shocked and amazed at what's going on. He's working, though. He is working hard. So this is my last load of logs right here, all ready to go down to the sawmill. I'm just going to get that taken care of this morning before things move along too quickly here. Come on, old Peterbilt. One more big run, brother. It's no small thing working your way back through this uh, this trail. I need to I need to clear this out, open it up just a little bit, because sometimes it can be a little bit of a challenge to figure out exactly where you're going to go and uh, how you're going to get there. But also stand to smooth it a little bit because frankly, it gets a little rock and rolly sometimes. Um, I did have a conversation with Lisa Helen. 
a very interesting conversation, mind you. And, uh, well, I'm sure you know at this point, Lisa Helen, conversations with Lisa Helen can be, um, a little bit, um, let's just say she's someone who's used to getting what she wants. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Am I, am I still on the trail? I can't, see, I can't even tell. I need to, I really need to work on this and open it up some more. Maybe turn it into an official road. Not gravel or anything, but at least an official kind of logging road so I can see where I'm bloody going all the time. Anyway, first thing I did was, you know, I made sure, I asked her if she was okay, and she, she is, she's doing fine. Um, and I asked her what happened, and she said, well, she went to confront her husband to talk to him. And she was upset. Obviously, anybody would be. And she was driving back. She was angry. Probably crying a little bit. You know how that goes. And uh, let's see what we got for some log sailage here. It's another 35. And of course, the logs never all come down at once, so... There's a couple more, 35, well, almost 40 on that run. Now, if I want to make any more money on the sawmill, I'm going to need to start harvesting some log, log action. Anyway, she said she was upset. She was probably driving too fast, and she pulled a shark out. <laughs> and I looked at her, and I said, you did what? She said, I pulled a Sharko. And I'm like, what's a Sharko? And she said, oh, it's it's this guy she knows. He's had a, he's had a history of uh, kind of, apparently, <laughs> crashing vehicles into bodies of water. <laughs> that's, that's the way she described it. Like, oh, this, this guy always seems to find whatever lake, river, stream, or otherwise is nearby. And, uh... He ends up driving into it somehow. So I guess she pulled a Sharko, whatever that means. Well, I know what it means, but I sure as crap don't know who Sharko is. <laughs> now one thing that I want to do today is get down to Harveston and take a look because I'm pretty sure um, the, the Postal Service has brought in their contractors to uh, start working down there. And I also want to see A how PR is getting along, and B, kind of get an idea about the town. Now, I did ask Lisa Helen how long she was planning on sticking around. Um, you know, I, I was nice about it. I, I said, you know, um, what's the, uh, what's the scoop on, you know, what are your plans? What do you, what do you think you're going to be able to accomplish? I still can't get over that. Uh, it's it's a shock to my system. <laughs> uh, anyway, she said she wasn't sure, but she was she was thinking of a few things. She appreciated how patient I was being, and she started sort of uh, talking about she wouldn't mind having a place of her own and I said so there's no chance you're you know you're gonna get back with your husband she said there's no chance she's done she's fed up she had enough and uh, I said well you know you've got to you have to make sure that you're taken care of you're gonna probably need a way to earn some money she said well she's good for a time obviously I mean her husband is clearly well off she never worked she you know she's like I don't know what I'm gonna do because um, you know pretty much straight out of uh, finishing school if you will she had met her husband kind of uh, I, I, I kind of get the impression she was one of those girls who was looking for an MRS degree if you know what that means you know, instead of a PhD, it's an MRS. Just looking to marry a guy who's 
clearly going to be successful and be able to take care of her in a way that she's accustomed to. And don't get me wrong, this goes the other way too. There are men who do this as well. I guess that would be a MR degree, Mr. Degree. <laughs> anyway, um, so she's never really done anything and she kind of said, oh, look at this. Uh, the the Postal Service doesn't fool around, do they? They got down here and started to work right away. It's not going to take them long to finish up and have a post office in our little town. Clearly. You know, so she was talking. She's like, you know, if I had a little piece of land somewhere, I could I could build a house or something and there was there was kind of a, you know a silence in the air and I wasn't going to commit to anything so Pierre tells me he has been hard at work hard at work on the uh, the lots down here working for the locals I asked him for a little bit of help and he said now he's got way too much to do let's take a look at what Pierre has managed to accomplish here in the last few weeks <music> Pierre has done some amazing stuff down at the home lots, wouldn't you say? Very nice, very nice indeed. Cameron Bell and Paul Spear have got their lots built up, thanks to Pierre. Big shout out. <laughs> anyway, uh, Kevin called me up and he asked me if I wouldn't come down here 
and spray the field with herbicide. He said he's got it all planted. Apparently he went all soybeans. And I couldn't help but ask. I'm like, Kevin, what are you doing? Obviously, this was not my original plan. And he said, well, Harv, said, you know, I did, the, I did a test run on the sunflowers. I wanted to see what we could get out of the sunflowers on all those fields. He said, look, you're, you're not you're not farming for sustenance anymore obviously that's you know that might be how you started out up here but that's not uh, not not in the in the cards these days that's not what you're all about he said I felt like it was time to uh, to to move this farm to a more industrial level and I said I I appreciate that Kevin and you're 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 right I get that I said you know when, when you make big changes like this I mean it's still my farm so you know fill me in brother now don't don't get me wrong I don't want to micromanage and I trust your judgment it's not my point the point is I need to know when something this dramatic is gonna happen on my farm because dude that was a shock to the system he said, I understand. So, it's all good. But, and I said, you know, what about grass? We're going to need grass. And he said, well, that's that's why I left the small. Well, obviously, we need the road to get to the new, the new pasture. But um, I also left that small field over there for grass. He said, grass is going to grow back quick. It doesn't take much maintenance. He said, a small patch like that is going to be enough to make what we need to make. You know, we're not dependent on that for our uh, farming income. And I said, okay, that's a fair point. That's a good point. I'll accept that. And so we're all good. We're all, Kevin knows what he's doing. I do trust his judgment. I was just a little bit taken aback. Well, there's a little spot that got kind of jagged down here. And I don't think that one one hundredth of an acre there is going to affect very much in the long and short of it all but holy crap dude I mean I appreciate what he's doing I really do and I think it's it's probably it's the right decision for sure it's just man do you remember when all this started I had to cut my way through the trees and make space just to build that little log cabin of mine over there and then now all of a sudden look at that we got one big massive field I, I still remember the first field it was just a little baby of a field my baby's all grown up <laughs> that's all there is to it my baby done went and grew up apparently thanks to Kevin you know I think I've said this before I'm sure I've said this before but it's good to get a fresh set of eyes on a problem sometimes one because you have an idea in your head and a lot of times it's really easy to just kinda kinda cling to the status quo and I know I missed a little strip back over through here so I'm gonna hit this edge just a little bit more um, but getting somebody else to look at the problem and, and view it from a different perspective can make a big, big difference sometimes. I heard again from Lisa Helen, and apparently she's had time to think since our conversation. And she would like me to set aside a piece of property in town. And yes, I know I'm double spraying right through here, but I want to make sure that my line is correct. Um, if there's a piece of property that I could set aside for her, well, okay. My response to her was, um, I don't have anything cleared right now. You know, there's not really any room. She said, what about, what about down on the, the, the town you've got, you know, the harvest in town down there. I said, well, yeah, I mean, there's room down there. She said, that would be perfect. You know, just a little spot where I could, uh, invest some money and put in a little something for myself and 
So I said, okay, it's not going to be a full-blown lot like uh, everybody else did. And so I agreed we'll lay out a spot for her. Um, since it's not a full-blown lot, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge her 50000 I just have to figure out where. And I think I'm going to wait until the post office is done before I, uh, before I give her the final word about where she needs to uh, start building if she wants to, whatever she wants to do. You know, she said she appreciates the fact that I've been so patient with her during this process and uh, you know we're trying to help people in need right now, I realize that she doesn't have to be needy some of this is brought on by herself so all of this is brought on by herself if I'm completely honest but I'm not I don't, I don't want to be judgy either I try to be the good guy do nice guys finish last I don't know if you can go to sleep at night and be happy with who you are I don't think a nice guy has finished last at all. Anyway, enough on that soapbox. I've said enough on that topic. I am who I am, and I will be who I will be, and if I didn't like it, that's their problem, not mine. <laughs> so we're going to get Lisa Helen hooked up. Hopefully it won't take too long, because, you know, while I enjoy the great outdoors, um... I would like to get back to my own bed. <laughs> I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. saw Kevin come back through once. Apparently he was uh, selling off some sunflower seeds. From what he tells me, he got a good deal from Hugo. Apparently Hugo wants to use that for animal feed. So, I mean, let's face it. He just made close to $40,000 on our sunflower seeds. I, I guess he knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, not... I, like I said, not that I doubt Kevin, but, you know, that's, that's, that's a load of timber. That's about what I make on a load of timber, and he did it with sunflower seeds. So, he, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no complaints. But before he gets back here and changes his mind and wants to do something different on this farm, I'm going to go plant a grass field, because <laughs> we do need the hay we need the silage we need i know he knows this and i'm just being smart alecky i know i know but still it needs to be done i feel like i've planted an awful lot of grass lately wouldn't you say well yeah because we replanted that whole path i love that pasture i am so happy with that pasture and the way it turned out kevin did a good job building it up I did a good job clearing it off. <laughs> you gotta pat yourself on the back once in a while, man. Just because. Just because. You gotta be proud of what you do. Not arrogant. Not arrogant, but proud. You get you know what I'm talking about. I feel like I'm I'm getting preachy in my old age. I shouldn't do that, should I? Shut up, Harv. Just plant some bloody grass, for the love of God. 
<laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Uh, I feel like a lot has been accomplished today, but not nearly as much as I thought was going to get accomplished today. Although, it's good to see what Pierre has been able to accomplish, and I'm sure he's going to continue working down there. I need to go down to Harveston, figure out what I'm going to do about Lisa Helen. Um, I think I'll lay out a plot, not as big as the home lots, but you know, because I don't want to, I don't want to eat up space. I, I, I kind of see when people really start getting in here, that they're going to want a bit in the way of amenities, you know, things, especially now that there's a post office, well, there's a post office, you know, could, could we have, um, well, a lot of different things that people might want to be close to, a little convenience store maybe, or, you know, any kind of town services, we'll see what they want, it's all up to them, you know, I, I mean, Harveston is technically my town, I suppose, but a town is more about the people who live there, and they need to decide what they want in in their. It's 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 at a size right now where it's be safer to call it a village, but you know, people need to have ownership of uh, what they're involved in. And so they need to decide what's going in down there. That's weird, though. Not uh, sunflower stubble in the field. I really would have thought that uh, it would would have needed some kind of plowing. But the seed is definitely going in. You know, it's not uncommon. It really isn't in uh, farming practices to plant over crop residue. That's what this would be called, is crop residue. Technical term for it. Hey, you got sunflower stems in your field. No, that's crop residue. Those aren't sunflower stems. That's crop residue. <laughs> Let's be specific about it. Anyway, things are a-changing. Things are very much a-changing, and hopefully... Keep your fingers crossed, guys, that we can get Lisa Helen sorted out. It's it's no small thing that she's going through. It really isn't. To, you know, be with somebody that you care about one day and the next day they betray you. And I still don't know the specifics of everything that happened, and I probably never will. Like I said, that's her business. But it's no small thing. And... We can only go through life based on the experiences that we've had and how we only face life based on our own personal experiences. Sometimes because of that, life will teach us very harsh lessons. And, you know, maybe that's what she needs. She needs a harsh lesson, but that doesn't mean you have to let her fall flat on her face. So we'll see what we can do to get her squared away. With all of that said, it's been an incredibly busy morning here in, on the homestead. And I think that's going to do it for this episode of Off the Grid. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. As always, I very much appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time... Take care.